Hi everyone, my name's Rebecca and I'm a fish biologist and ichthyologist and I specialise in lower codes catfishes but today I'm not going to talk about catfishes at all. So I'm going to talk about maybe another model organism. Um, so platys are one of the most common fishes in the hobby but that doesn't make them boring. In fact I think platys are quite brilliant. Platys at all platys, platy fish actually refers to members of the genus Xiphophorus. Uh, and particularly members that do not express an extension to the caudal or tail fin. So these are generally known under the common names um, sawtails and platys. Um, and they are not two separate clades within this group. In fact, they are sawtails li littered amongst um, species of um, platys and vice versa. In the aquarium trade though, when it comes to Platys, we really talk about two species and a hybrid of the two in most cases. So this is the southern platy, Cyphophorus maculatus from North and Central America and the variatus platy, which is Cyphophorus um, variatus and this is mainly found in North America. Both inhabit quite warm waters comparatively to many North American fishes around 18 to 25 degrees centigrade but Cyphophorus um, variatus can go down to 15 degrees centigrade without issues. Both are adaptable omnivores feeding on insect larvae, plant detritus um, plants, detritus, algae, and they're not really fussy when it comes to food, which makes them brilliant when you're looking for something that is quite adaptable in that regard. Males have what is called a gonopodium, and this is a modified anal fin, and that's what they use to insert into the female, I believe, to release the sperm and fertilize the eggs. Uh, and this is likely a method that would prevent sperm getting lost and a lower juvenile mortality as these eggs are not predated and there's less predation on larger fry, which I'll go to uh, or go and talk about later. Probably one of the more interesting things about Cyphophorus maculatus, so the southern platy, the one we see or recognise more, even though most are hybrid of both is their sex determination method, which is probably the same for the variatus platy, but I cannot um, find any references to suggest, um, to suggest that it's different or the same. So these use a method known as polygenic um, sex determination, and they have multiple sex chromosomes, or multiple, or not sex chromosomes themselves, but um, sort of, it's a bit difficult to explain, but anyway, so these use X, an X chromosome, a Y chromosome, and a W chromosome. The W chromosome is actually a modified X chromosome, and with an allele dominant um, to the Y chromosome, resulting in the production of ovaries, so making the offspring, um, or the individual with these female. Um, you'll probably be more familiar with the XY um, chromosomal determination method, which is um, common in like humans and many mammals. Um, XY is uh, male, XX female, and the determination um, is based largely on that Y chromosome, but there is variations on that, um, and also the fact, uh, the presence of the SR, uh, SRY gene, which is found um, which influences the development of testes, um, which is the male sex organ, I guess it's probably easier to say. So the XYW method that's used in platys can be found in Rift Valley cichlids, and this is beneficial because it skews the sex ratio towards females, but it's not always the case. I believe Drosophila fruit flies, there isn't it? Um, it doesn't so much. But this can be useful if you want more females in a population than males. Females can display several variations, so they can display XX, so two X chromosomes. They can display XW, so X with that modified um, X chromosome. And males can display XY and YY. Um, in humans, you wouldn't see YY. Um, but you can see it in others. Um, 
and generally this is because of inheritance. Um, humans, fe human fertile females aren't aren't going to have um, or, um, a Y chromosome, and it w they wouldn't be fur. Um, you wouldn't produce a female with it. Oh, I'm explaining that so badly, but you wouldn't see that YY in um, humans at all. So how does it skew the ratio? Well, whatever the um, whatever the A W chromosome, um, the offspring will be female. It's dominant to Y. Y is dominant to X. There are three combinations resulting in the sex being female, to put it simply, and two for male. Um, otherwise, you could go and look at um, ratios um, or predicting using ratios. Uh, using sort of Punnett squares because it's quite easy, um, easily done. So one of the most common myths that I've already dispelled is that uh, platys use temperature sex determination, which is found in quite a few reptiles. I believe turtles, tortoises, um, but not in all animals. And so these definitely don't. And I think partially my, people might think that because of that skew towards um, the female sex. But I have noticed a reason many people will see this is that females are more common and that it takes that gonopodium time to develop. And this development taking time, there are a few signs but it does look feminine for a long time. Um, if you look at a female platy, you'll see that um, that anal fin will be very rounded, opposed to a male which is elongate. The females don't have a more triangle, their sort of the spine, the lower portion of the um, anal fin isn't more elongate than the rest, or particularly elongate. So in juveniles, which are developing that gonopodium, and there's one that just came across a few seconds ago, that lower um, ray will be more elongate if it's likely to be male. And that's how I use to separate um, before that organ is fully developed, before they're reproductive. So um, let's just see. Yeah, so this male, this one down here is a male. That one up there is likely a female. That gonopodium is quite well developed. So here have to be removed soon. Um, before it, well, before he can actually use it. And you can use that on young fish. I find it, it is a bit stressful trying to catch them when they're that small, but they, you can see how quickly that organ does develop. The, this fry is probably month old, maybe. And there's several batches in here, especially the smaller ones. The majority, for some reason, are right there. Probably because the discus are right in the middle and they aren't particularly keen on spending time around the discus for good reason. So other sort of sexual dimorphism, males seem to be larger and better coloured as juveniles. But then of course eventually the females catch up and exceed in size. I've got no mature males in here but these females are at least twice the size of the mature males that are the same age or older and it kind of makes sense they need to fill a lot in their body um, it's quite expensive to do that reproduction method that they do so I'll talk about it now and so the reproductive method of platys is known as viviparity not all polycidae are viviparous so Polycidae being guppies are your traditional live bears, not a live bear such as in the half beaks or the um, stingrays or I think sharks. Um, I'm talking about a particular group of fish, so this would be a family of fishes. Some are oviparous, so egg layers, some are ovoviviparous. Both ovo uh, both viviparity and oviviparity can be defined as live bearers, but there's a difference really in how this offspring develops. Oviviparous fish develop within the egg, um, in the female, feeding off a yolk sac likely, 
whereas river powers are connected to the mother where the nutrients is obtained directly from the mother so this is a bit more costly I guess over time whereas the production of that yolk sac and um, egg is costly a bit earlier on but both of these are beneficial because your fry is larger, it's more likely to survive than ones that are much smaller and they're already able to feed, they don't have that sedentary period where they're absorbing the yolk sac because they're doing it while they're safe within the mother. Over a bit, uh, where am I, sorry, um, in this case, um, Xylophorus maculatus and likely as an extension, Xylo, um, um, so Cyphophorus variatus are viviparous and in this case um, Platys have a placenta convergent but not the same as that found in mammals. Is there anything else about these fishes? I would say they're just adaptable, they're quite easy to keep and they're quite entertaining, they have very interesting interactions so this is largely a female tank, the males are in the other tank um, I would do a video on them but there's not that many. Males tend to have a little bit more aggression um, and they are quite boisterous towards the majority of other fishes. Um, so I try, I'm keep, well they're boisterous towards the females, other males, they chase them. So I put the females in another tank. So these guys get a break and I don't have so much fry being produced as you can see there's a lot and this is about two three batches based on size um, because most of the previous survivors from well one batch only had a male survive and these there's quite a lot of males but I would say it's like 75% or so females I'm not quite sure I'll do it once I well, I'll calculate once I've got them in the other tank. But then there's also, remember when it comes to uh, sex determination, there is always a sex-related mortality. Males might not live as long as females, um, or they might have an early mortality. Ignore the mark on the discus. She spooked, um, he spooked earlier, so he has got a little damage to his scale. But... Anyway, so I'll end this video here. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please comment, like, subscribe. Um, and any video ideas, um, I'm going to continue my lower card diet um, videos, but I just need some more footage of the different species I'm going to talk about or different genera. And anyway, thank you for watching.